You know, another place we're hearing from some of the survivors is from the actual crime scene. Yeah, since Sunday's massacre, the street outside Pulse nightclub has changed drastically. And that's where we find News 6 reporter Nadine Giannis. Nadine, you're live with Orange County Sheriff Jerry Demings, right? Yeah, I am, Matt. You know, all day we've been trying to get answers as to what's really been happening here on the scene. Uh, haven't had any briefings today, but I saw the sheriff here and I thought we'd grab him. So uh, Sheriff Demings, kind of take me through what exactly is happening today with the investigation. What can you tell us? Well, the good news is the investigation is progressing and the crime scene itself is continuing to be processed. And so the FBI has made headway. Uh, however, they are giving us an estimate that uh, they're going to continue working within the building for another 7 to 11 days. 7 to 11 days that this road could be closed? Uh, that's correct. However, there will be different portions that will be systematically open uh, in the coming days, and we are hopeful that tomorrow a portion of the roadway will be open, but they're going to be at that building for perhaps another week. Are they telling you anything about what they're finding inside of there or anything of what they're gathering at this point? No, and I haven't asked what they're uh, doing. It's the FBI's investigation at this point, and I'm very confident that they are going to try to answer all the questions of, about the why. Why did this occur? Why did this individual take the actions that he uh, took? and what happened inside uh, that facility for the duration of the incident. Sheriff, about 30 minutes ago, our Mike Holfeld spoke to a club owner of a club, Revere, who said that this gunman had friend requested him, had visited the club several times. Could have this club, Revere, in our area been the next target? Do you know of this? It would be mere speculation on my part, but uh, certainly this individual had planned this attack. This probably was not his first time here and uh, he likely visited other uh, possible locations and decided to attack this particular club for whatever reason. You know, we, we heard about Disney, you know, he may have scoped out Disney apparently, reportedly, and it looks like we were just talking about the fear, not only here, but across the world, we have tourists here. What about the safety of our major theme parks, major attractions for people here in Orlando? Well, we want to reassure uh, our visitors and our residents that this still remains a safe place. What happened here could have happened anywhere in America. This was an attack on America. It was not really about Orlando, but it was an attack on America. Are these places safe? These Disney places World, are safe. Universal, SeaWorld, all safe? Uh, these places are safe here, our theme parks and other locations. Uh, the goal is to get them back to normal and continue to remain normal as much as possible uh, because if we succumb to the fear that a terror uh, incident brings to our minds, then we are losing the battle. So in this case, uh, the goal is to be resilient and to operate and to act as normal. We will not uh, give the control of how we feel to somebody else. Don't give in to that fear. Sheriff, thank you so much for talking to us. Seven to ten more days here at the scene. That's what we just heard. Matt, back to you. Yeah, well, Nadine, while you still have the sheriff there, can you ask him, you know, we heard from the survivors today. Has he been to the hospital? Has he spoken to any of those survivors who were talking? They are asking if uh, you had spoken to any of the survivors today. We heard from many from the hospitals. Were you at the hospitals? Have you been speaking to them? I have spoken to uh, one survivor today. And it was a young man who was one of the last people that was rescued from the club itself. Mm. And he also told me that he lost his best friend in there. The two of them had gone to the club. And so I could see that uh, it was still uh, affecting him. Uh, he was uh, in tears. Uh, his car was still there inside of the uh, crime scene. And so we try to reunite him with his car and also get him some counseling uh, assistance as well. Okay, Sheriff, thank you so much. And guys, one thing the Sheriff mentioned earlier is that uh, your, your deputies and the officers as well are having a debriefing today to kind of get through all of the grief and the chaos that they saw as well. Is that right? Yes, uh, that is actually going on as we speak, uh, where the brave souls of all of those law enforcement officers who responded initially, uh, they're going through a session now with counselors and others so that we, uh, we want to be certain that they're dealing with their emotional state so that they can continue to help the people here. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. Guys, back to you. Uh, Nadine, just one more question. Uh, these guys have to be exhausted. He said 11 days we could be looking at. What kind of shifts are they working? How are they breaking that up? 
Yeah, they're asking, uh, Matt wants to know, you said 11 days, it's exhausting shifts. Do you have any idea of what kind of shifts these guys are working? You guys said you're strapped for resources. Well, most of the law enforcement personnel that you see here are now working 12-hour shifts. What I have done is reached out to other uh, surrounding uh, sheriff's offices and law enforcement agencies to help uh, provide some relief for our staff here. Uh, and they have all stepped up to the plate to say we're willing to help you. Okay. All right, guys, any more questions for the sheriff here? That should do it. Nadine Yannis reporting live for us with Sheriff Jerry All right, Jerry thank you, Dennis. guys. Thank you. We appreciate it.